should make plans. Just go for the plans for in person um, versus virtual <laughs> being accordingly. For purposes of in person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation. Details noted below. Um, the toll free number, if you want to call in, is 833 548 0276. The meeting ID is 911 604. 1580. Um, and should you need a passcode, it's 570012. The Zoom link you will find on the Town of Deerfield's website under calendar under this meeting. You can just click on the Zoom link and join us there. Hey, Chris. Good. So um, I don't think we have any public comment, but we do have public comment first. If we have any public. Um, I, I do have a request, Trevor, um, Please. if if we could just vote on the um, library appeal letter. Yes. I really appreciate it. Yeah, because it, it will only be a couple minutes and, yeah. and then Casey can get it out. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to vote for that or approve that. Well, I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Um, sure, I'll second it, assuming everyone's read it. I have read it, but do you want us to uh, go over it? Oh, no, no, no. I, I you know, it might be important to just kind of talk about it a little bit. I have it. Sure. sure. I knew it was the end of my packet. It's at the end. Yeah. Well, I can, I can just give Turn you an off. update, Trevor, because I, uh, I hadn't talked to you since last week. So I'm um, at our meeting last week. So what happened is Chris wrote a really good article in the recorder. And um, what happened was he wrote that I was going to follow up. So I felt like I felt like I had to follow up. So um, I called um, um, Orange and Gloucester and um, Seekonk and Westford and Grafton yeah. and um, discussed what they were going to try to, you know, what their gap was between what they had initially their cost of their initial project and then what is happening um, in two, 2022 for construction costs. And so um, what happened is we got a total of a, a really close to $60 million. So right. um, this letter reflects um, all of us trying to reach out and including Amherst because Amherst read Chris's article and reached out to me. So um, that was wonderful. Um, because their project was actually approved last year and they accepted the grant and it was 36 million and it just came back at 48 million. So they have $11 million gap wow. uh, that they have to cover and they had already accepted the grant. So this is, um, you know, the town agreed to move forward with it. So this is actually a serious request and um, it's obviously the predictable library process from 2017, 18 prices and, you know, pre COVID and then 2022 construction costs in the middle of <clears throat> um, has, has allowed us to have this big gap of about 60 million in this cycle of library grants. Right. So what we're hoping is because the, there's almost $2 billion in ARPA money that hasn't been nailed down. I'm sure there's promises made and I'm sure it's been spent 10 times over, but we want to get this letter out to the governor and in their hands so that somehow we can, you know, get our request in there for about 60 million to handle this new round of library grants. Yeah. And, and Tim wrote this fantastic letter. So oh, ind independently of Carol and I was, um, Talk the the library, a small group of library trustees have been talking with me about writing their own letter, um, but um, they all agreed that the select board should probably be the sub the the senders. So I had gone on the M MBLC site and looked at the various grants that were awarded. Came up with, you know, what the gaps were. Gloucester was a little troubling, so couldn't really figure that one out because. Apparently they originally started with a 50 million separate building and nobody supported it in town. 
and they got permission to re reapply and come up with a different plan. So, um, you know, it's unclear what their gap is, except it's obvious that their project's been affected by COVID pricing. So, sure. Just like um, yeah. so I dr drafted this letter, drew, drew a little bit from the uh, library folks, um, which they had started in a different direction, but um, I ran it by them and they love it. So yeah. I'm, I'm fine uh, with that. And uh, so, and then I shared it with Casey so that everyone could look at it and see if it's yeah. something we wanted to do. Uh, yeah, I read it this afternoon. I thought it was excellent, well written. It was like nice and to the point and just really, much, you know, here's what's the problem. Here's what we need and here's how you can solve it super easy you know yeah well the thing is we're under the gun because um the federal budget closes on september 30th and it was clear from jim mcgovern's um discussion that they're going to the federal government will claw back money that's not appropriated so the money's going to get appropriated for the supplemental budget state budget in october yep. so we have to get our request in the mix somehow. So that's why it's so critical that we have to send this letter out immediately. So I would like to make a motion that we um, forward the letter to the governor's office as presented. Yeah, entertain a second. And I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor or any other discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Thank you so much for your work on that. That's awesome. Well, Tim did amazing yeah, thank you, Tim. literary composer here. <laughs> I feel like we're going to wear him out. One of years, I know, but... I know. He's been already writing like all kinds it's of helping things. my typing. <laughs> <laughs> In his sleep. Oh, good. Um, so, okay. So then uh, that is done. Is there other, I, I will get us out by 630 because I mean, this will be a longer discussion later on, but I think, um, I know we have CCI at 6.30 tonight, right? And I don't right. Want to yeah. So um, what I thought was the main, the main reason I wanted to meet was because I wanted to start talking about publicly what we're going to, what we need to do and start educating the public on what, what the needs are. Um, so I thought I would just ramble a little bit first and then get some input from you and then move on. So um I really wanted the public to start understanding what our issues are. And we've been, I've been talking about this since before I don't know, 2019, we've been talking about, or 18, we've been talking about, we have these sewer needs, right? And we have the South Deerfield plant and we have the old Deerfield plant. And early on, when we did our asset management plan, we had, the plan all along was to be a four phase project where we fixed the major issues at South Deerfield. Once that was complete, we went up to Old Deerfield, fixed the major issues there. And then we came back and finished up phase two at South Deerfield and then go back and finish up phase two at Old Deerfield. Once we got into starting the, you know, doing the design work, this is old news to a lot of people, but I just I think it's important for a recap. The, um, what we had found was that it, it made sense really to, to tackle the bulk of the project that we could get USDA funding for early on and, and tackle because we had to do water stuff. There was things in phase two that really needed to get pulled into phase one in the South Deerfield plant. So we decided to build that plant with the anticipation that it could handle everything in town or it would just be sufficient on its own or we could even take in regional partners. But really that plant was gonna be set up with a headworks, two new clarifiers, one rebuilt, one new, a new pump building, taking care of the uh, safety issues like the chlorine. Um, so we started with that project and we've been going down that road and the town has graciously decided that we would just stay with that project and get that up to speed. So we had requested another $3 million um, uh, to, to finish out phase two there. And we were hoping to do that all in a change order. Um, we have, uh, because of procurement requirements, we cannot complete all of phase two in a procurement uh, in a change order. We are going to tackle a good portion of that, but right now we had a meeting with USDA. Um, this, this, this board, the Sewer Commissioners and Select Board, had approved to move ahead with about a $4 million 
um, I think it was $4 million remodel. We have about $6 million left to do there. We we're going to do a $4 million change order. That was going to stay under the 20% and, and, and sail through. We have not signed off on that yet because we need approval from USDA that that's not going to ding our, um, our applicant money that we put in. So my fear was we were going to sign this change order add this money and then USDA would say, oh, you've got all this extra money you're adding. We guess you don't need the grant. So the idea, and we've had this discussion with USDA, they know what we're trying to do. They're trying to figure out, they're taking this week to try and figure out how do they set up the budget sheets. And they have, they have precedent in Lanesboro for this where we can have two separate buckets where they understand that we're still going to get the grant money to pay this off. And yet we're still going to do our change order. I didn't want to sign off on that until I knew that we weren't jeopardizing our grant money. So until I get an okay from USDA, right. That we don't want, I mean, that'd be a nightmare, right. We'd move ahead with this thing and we'd realize, Oh, wait a minute, we're not getting our grant. So they verbally said yes to that, but we had a meeting this week, um, a call with the engineers and USDA once we got the approval. And they're like, huh, let me think about this. And then Steve Schreiber, the engineer said, we could use an example of Lanesboro that did this similar thing. So just until we get that, okay, I ha we haven't gone forward with that change order yet. Um, and then I know Carolyn wants to move forward with the, with the other two to finish it up, right? Just to get to get a bit out there. So we'll do that definitely when the time is right as well. So that that takes kind of that's where we are with the South Deerfield plant at the moment. Um, and then we're starting to turn our eyes towards the old Deerfield plant. We have a lot of projects we're looking at in town to do, and um, you know regulatory projects where DEP is on us to make sure we meet permit is one of the most important projects we have because we don't want to get fined. Um, so with the evaluation of the old Deerfield plant in the asset management plan, there's work to be done there. And I think really, I just want to bring the public up to speed on what the, what the issues are there and kind of how we can go about fixing them. Um, there are really, it breaks into kind of three, three categories and the, the first and most important thing is that plant doesn't meet permit all the time. Um, when we have low flows or we have, we have extra flow, um, the problem is, is that the clarifiers that were built in the 70s, just like we had at the old the South Deerfield plant are small. And when you get a lot of flow through, um, the BOD, which is the, the settlement, the particles don't have time to settle because um, in a large clarifier that's circular, everything can settle and clarify out. In these small clarifiers built in the 70s, they don't have enough time. So what goes out to the river don't, doesn't always meet permit. And um, eventually DEP is going to nail us on that. So, and we've known this all along and they know it and we're, we're trying most of the time it meets, but not always. So that's was the number one issue was we have to meet permit. The second... Um, issues at that plant were um, safety. Uh, there's a kind of a wet, pit, you know, wet well, they call it, where, where everything comes into that plant. That plant was built up high because it's in a floodplain, but the pipes still come underground, you know, 12 feet under the ground. So when they come into that building that's been raised up, it's about 30 feet down before you get to that wet, that wet well. It's just a safety hazard, um, especially when we usually have one person on site. Um, if something happens, it's way down. And when you're trying to clear out rags, sneakers, t-shirts, whatever comes through the system, because we have no headworks like we had in, in South Deerfield, you've got to bucket that stuff up on a pulley, 30 feet up, dump the stuff out, you know. So you're working down in a very tight, confined area that's way down. It's just not a safety, it's not a safe system. The second issue, which we had at South Deerfield was chlorine. We, you know, for years we've done everything. We disinfect with chlorine. Um, and with the gases that puts off, that was one of the major issues that DEP had at the South Deerfield plant is that, that there's, we should not be using chlorine. If we are, we need all this 
apparatus, you know, in case you have a, you have a gas problem. So it's the idea is to change that over to UV disinfectant, like we're doing at the South Deerfield plant. Um, the third issue at that plant is that is very old, very old electrical, and there's no headworks. Uh, so you have all this junk coming in, like we had in, in the, in, they're identical plants. One just has a little less flow, but it still needs to process. So the electrical, we've robbed Peter to pay Paul, and now Peter doesn't have any money to rob from. So um, we have no, no duplicate electrical to fix there. Uh, when something goes. We can always try and Mickey Mouse something, but really um, when I ask what are the major issues, it's one meeting permit, two was safety, three was old electrical. Um, so really when, you, when you're dealing with a, a treatment plant, you have two issues. You have the treatment, treating the water, making sure it's, it's safe when it's done, all of that work by settling it, bugs, chemical processes, and then you have disposal. You, have, you can either discharge it to the river like we do, and we have, a, we have a permit to do that, or you can discharge it to the groundwater, which we can't do right now because we're not set up for that. Um, uh, or you could pump it somewhere. So that, those are really the two things. You've got to treat it first, and then you decide what you, how you want to dispose of, of what's left over. Um, there's talk about maybe watering fields with it. There's, you know, there's all kinds of different things you can do, but you still have the aspects of treating it first, which is all the stuff I talked about first. Um, so really um, the, the, the discussions are starting, well, we've been, there's been a sewer group working on this for, for quite a long time, trying to come up with different ways to do it. And there's really, there's really four methods. There's fixing the plant in a variety of ways. There's really two ways to fix it. Um, One's a little less money than the other, and um, you kind of get what you pay for, just like the other plant. But you still have to kind of meet all the needs that we have. The third option was was pumping it out of town, which is really it's kind of unattainable at the moment until you know you had large federal money to pay for it. Another partner wanted to pay for it. Other uh, users could make it more affordable. Um, so there's there's really three. There's really, and, and there's two ways that you can do that. You can either send it down five and 10, or you can send it down Mill Village Road. We felt five and 10 was just way too much money. You're dealing with all the state road and all that state work. Um, and it's very expensive. You gotta dig a lot deeper, the cement, the, the tars deeper. It just really didn't make sense. However, that's kind of where your economic development would be. So the one thought was to, if we did a pump station, we would run it down Mill Village Road, and then people on five and 10 could get an easement to tie into that through the, through the fields um, to Mill, Mill Village Road. You would need a second pump station somewhere along the way, and in the future, we may be able to pick up houses in West Deerfield. Those are, again, long-term, that's a long-term, long-shot you know, project, but should still be open to look at until we have um, a closed door completely. Um, so really the main two things is kind of deciding, do we, do we fix the old Deerfield plant with putting clarifiers in or, or a second idea, which was a, um, I want to call it a RSM, what is it? Oh, SBRs. So, it's a, it's a different way of, and I'm gonna kind of put a packet together so people can see this, this spreadsheet here has kind of all the things that need to happen at a plant or at that plant and kind of, you know, treating the water is one and how we're gonna do it. And then there's all the aspect of how we're gonna pay for it, which is really the hard part. And Tim is our liaison to do that. He's working with, the nonprofits. And I didn't know if you wanted to touch base. I know you had a meeting yesterday. Do you want to hit on any of that discussion or ready for that at all, Tim? Or um, no, I'm briefly, we had an hour and a half meeting with Lisa Mead and uh, Casey Warren present. We talked about all the various options that have been discussed up for several years. Yeah. Um, we tried to get a sense of you know, what uh, the nonprofits were willing to do vis-a-vis -vis payment. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
I came away with a better sense of where they are, but I'm not going to discuss that right now. Yep. And um, and I also uh, came away with a sense that the pumping station plans, although are they they remain an option, there are lots of obstacles to to enacting them. Mm-hmm. Number one, uh, there's no guarantee that we're going to find federal or mass works money to do it. Right. The time it's going to take to explore those options is a big challenge. Justin and Dave may not agree with that, but that's my assessment. Yep. And that if we're looking to solve the problem in the short term, the quickest thing to do is fix the plant. And we could, we have to resolve some issues about how to pay for it. Uh, but that's a thing that's probably going to be the work of the next three months, four months that Lisa's going to have to help Casey right. and the rest of us get through. So yeah. that's the short description, but it was very cordial. Good, good, good. I appreciate I, that. I had one thing I just wanted to throw out. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons that uh, we have problems with permits is because it's so up and down that, you know, when the kids are in school, obviously high usage. When they're gone for the summer, you know, it's dead. I mean, you're down to like two <clears throat> of of operations. So one of the things I was thinking we could put on the wish list is um, for when um, people um, pump their septic systems, we could have the, um, you know, whatever facility part of the repair take in the septic tank pumping. And we encourage everyone to have, if they're going to get their tank pumped, it would be over summer break so that um, when we have so little usage, we would get our uses back up. Mm-hmm. I know that it's, you know, who knows get who's getting pumped. I mean, it's not anything, but when you go, when 95% of your users are gone, it makes a huge difference on the, the flows. So, you know, that was one thought to make the flows more even. Mm-hmm. The other, the other thing is, I would encourage us to you to to try to get a second clarifier, because I think one of the problems when we have too much is we don't have enough flow necessarily in the river when it's a drought. So you want to time our releases when the dams are releasing, and that requires a little bit more storage. So, I mean, there's a couple things we could do that would have more consistency on our permit or we wouldn't be always worried about, you know, our permit issues. Um, I think, and I thought so that, I'm just throwing that out. No, it's good. I, um, if I, if I understand it right, our permit is when we have too much flow. Justin, I know Justin uh, Skelly is on, he's for, um, for D- DPC, our engineer. I was curious, Justin, is that where we're not meeting permits when we have too much flow? Like a Yeah, so cl- or not yeah to flow? comment on that, most of the time, you know, with most facilities, it ends up being when there's too much flow and it essentially washes out, you know, the solids that are that are typically settling in. You typically have like a blanket of sludge that continuously compresses with the clear water on top. So if you could imagine, you know, it needs a very still, quiet environment. So if you have a rush of flow come through the plant and those clarifiers aren't large enough, you know, just speaking generally with any facility, you know, you end up washing out some of that sludge, some of that solid blanket that you want to, to stay um so yeah typically is the high flow um and I was t- thinking it was reverse i was thinking it was like we didn't have enough flow and there was like it was dry and that kind of thing so I was, that is that is another challenge though that's a whole nother challenge uh you know plants with flows that are variable um you know having the right flexibility to turn tanks on and off um to carolyn's point you know your flows are you know very low compared to the peaks and that, that does present some challenges on the operational side got it so maybe so yeah so I was just trying to figure out ways that we yeah. could uh, you know um even it out more and and there you know since the town you know taxpayers are paying for you know some of the improvements um that are happening in South Deerfield you know why why not put put that facility in in the old Deerfield plant if it will help during the summer and just encourage people you know, have some kind of incentive. I mean, we'd have to charge for it, obviously, but um, 
whatever incentive, we'd have some incentive to make it done during the summer. And I know we've talked about that in, in every town meeting, everyone's like, oh, we need this thing right now. And, um, and I could be wrong, but I was under the impression like it was really hard to do. Well, when I talked to Eric at the plan, he's like, no, don't do that. But, um, but I, I recognize like our taxpayers are paying and it, it's harder and harder to get rid of this stuff. Could we build a system that could do it. And I think the, one of the issues is the potency, like the, uh, the concentration, it's like, like concentrated orange juice, right? You need to really dilute the stuff before it can go into the system. And I don't know, I think maybe as you're talking, Carolyn, you'd need a bigger tank somewhere to like. Right. And, it, and if we were, if we were going to put in the two tank clarifier, you know, upgrade to two tanks, then we would have the ability to do that. But also we'd have more storage capacity to, you know, like when in a drought like this, when the dams do release, the water does go up significantly. It's like 20 year storms on the banks. So we, that's when we would release, you know, into the river when we have a higher flow. Because generally that flow, like I, I remember, I, I was blown away by this, but I didn't understand this. I, what I was under the impression was that water comes through the plant however fast it's coming in, it goes out. There is no brakes on it. It just kind of goes. And then our job is to kind of treat it in that meantime, unless you had some other storage tank that's not a clarifier, correct? You'd have to, Justin, is that right? You'd have to have a separate tank, not a clarifier? Or can, can you store it in a clarifier? Yeah, I mean, that would be tricky. You'd need like an offline dedicated tank for it. It could be a clarifier if you're not using it at the time. To okay. Typically, yep. we would call it like an equalization or an EQ tank. Yep. Plants that do have variable flows, usually it would be up front at the beginning of the plant, and that could fill up, you know, for low flow periods, and then you can yep. through the plant and treat it. Because you're right, you know, currently when a drop of water enters at the front of the plant, there's a drop of water leaving, you know. Right. So it is whatever comes in needs to be leaving just hydraulically, right? Okay. So, um, and I'm oh, sorry. The septage. <laughs> Shun's got his hand up. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, I was I was patient. I was just waiting for yeah, something. No, no, to you, you waved but a lot of the things we're discussing, correct me if I'm wrong. If we if we put a dual, dual clarifier system and did the plan that we were talking about on the one page document, a lot of these issues would be resolved, right? So some of these are related to the fact that this plant is what it is, and um, I do think also that we it there's got to be an engineering solution to taking concentrated sludge and um, deconcentrating it and getting into a system. I mean, we can't be the only, only community in the world that's ever faced this issue. It could make a revenue stream for that because other communities are having the same problem. So if suddenly we have the wastewater treatment people dropping their things and we're charging them a thousand dollars a truckload, there's some immediate money as opposed to somebody who might tap into a pipeline sometime in the future. So I think those are all good arguments for really thinking, is there a way that this is viable for us mm -hmm. in, re, in, in, in a repair of this plant or a retrofit of this plant? But we got one minute left, so. Oh, we do, okay. You wanna wrap it up? Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then I think we'll just come back to that discussion because I know that everybody has asked for that quite a bit and I think what I have heard was that it was too expensive, or we can do it. That's not a problem with engineering, but it was just definitely too much money to do um, up front. But we'll we'll decide that later on. Okay, so we'll maybe put this on the next agenda and keep, this keep on talking. The next agenda. Okay. Is there anything else on the agenda we need to do before we can we stay keep our meeting open, or just do we have to join the? We have to close this and open again. I think you're post. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're posted jointly with CCI. Correct? Yes. Should we close this? You can close this again? one and then okay. just go to the other. So entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'll make the motion. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Tim Hilchey. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye.